Hi, this is Shawnee Lavender, the Conscious Moms Coach, and I'm really glad to be here with you today. This video is part of a mini series about some of the topics that come up in my parent coaching work, mostly with moms, but also with dads. And I thought it'd be useful to share here. I've also shared this in Facebook. I do weekly Facebook Live conversations, and I shared this there as well as, as one long video. So the topic is people-pleasing, and specifically people-pleasing in moms. Now, what I want to do in this video series is I want to define for you what I mean by saying people-pleasing. What, what does that look like? What am I specifically referring to? Um, how it shows up in our lives as moms, why it shows up in, in my belief, and then the problems that happen for us if we are in that behavior as moms, and also the problems that it presents for our children. So that's what it's going to be about, and let me go ahead and get us started with a definition. So when I say people-pleasing, what I am talking about is a person who has a hypersensitivity or hyper-awareness to the preferences and opinions of others. And then they have a habitual bias towards making decisions that are geared towards meeting the uh, wants and being geared towards the opinions of those other people. So to make them happy or keep them happy. Now I put that in quotation marks because as you'll know from watching other videos of mine, I actually don't believe that we can make other people happy or keep them happy, that that's their emotions are their responsibility. So in this context though, what I mean is that the people pleaser, one of the motivations for a people pleaser underneath, and it's usually unconscious, is to do things that the other person will like. And therefore, the hope underneath is that, in part, that other person will be happy and appreciate the people pleaser. So along with this behaving to the advantage of the other person, what also happens in people pleasing, so this is still part of the definition, is that simultaneously the person who is the people pleaser is in some way ignoring, subjugating, or perhaps not even being aware of her own needs, wants, and wishes. So it is this, um, it's this relationship where as a people pleaser, the focus is on doing what others are wanting or what you think they're wanting and trying to keep them happy and putting yourself generally last or much lower on the priority list. So that's, that's what I'm talking about in terms of what is people pleasing. And I can show up in a lot of different ways. And let me say this too, that one of the reasons I'm talking about this is one, it's because it's so common in the moms that I coach and most of them may be aware of it. Like they may say, oh yes, I, you know, I, I have a little bit of that in me. However, most of them don't realize that it actually is a significant contributing factor to the stress that they're having in family life the um, conflict that they have in family life, conflict with their children, conflict with their spouse. Um, so they're not aware of how negative this way of being in the world, this people pleasing, how negative an impact it's having on them. They think of it as, well, yeah, that's there, but they don't realize how, how strong its influence is. So that's one of the reasons why I wanna share this, uh, this video series. And the second reason is, is I have a ton of experience with people pleasing. I will say that I am a recovering people pleaser, which is true. And so I have seen how negative this negatively rather this can impact 
one's own life through my own experience. So I have a lot of knowledge in this area. And so that's, I want to share it and, and share some of what I've learned and, and also what I've worked on with my clients and help them make shifts out of this behavior. So that's the definition and a little bit of, of the rationale of why, why I'm here with this video. So let me now talk about why this is, is something that moms are, are dealing with and dads too. However, you're going to find out why moms are dealing with it in particular. So this was something, this people pleasing behavior was modeled by many of our own mothers and it was modeled to them by many of their mothers. So it's, it's a handed down uh, way of being in the world and a handed down uh, belief set. And it is, so it's something that we saw. It's something that we saw, we witnessed, we experienced it as children. And, and so it's this, this legacy that we've inherited. It is also very much in line with the cultural conditioning that girls still get today which is partially that women are still predominantly the caretakers of other human beings, whether they're children or uh, elderly people. So women in that caretaking role to be a good caretaker, one of the skills that really helps be a good caretaker is to have that awareness, have that sensitivity to others, to be looking out, not just literally like watching, but to have an inner sense and empathy, also um, a desire to be caring. So that is something that girls, because they're still getting a lot of messages about, hey, you're the caretaker, you know, that's what your gender does, that there's socialization and enculturation that happens to prime us as women, now as moms ourselves, to be in you know, really get into this behavior early on. The other thing that, that fits in with that enculturation is that girls are also get the message about some of their behaviors that may be deemed selfish or self-centered. And so they get the message that often that those behaviors are not ladylike, they're not, you know, what a good person does. And, and boys can get those too. Girls get them more often and certainly very directly. And so when that gets coupled with other things, you know, it's not, there's not just one reason we become uh, people pleasers by default. These are some of the factors though that influence moms and make it easy for many of us to have people pleasing in our nature. The other piece is that as moms, it's still very often true that many of us, again, usually at an unconscious level, we are setting ourselves up to um, gr be graded, if you will, even if it's only in our own minds, on our momness by how caring we are and how selfless we are and how much we do for our children and do for our spouses. So again, without knowing it, we're going around in the world and we're looking at other moms and unconsciously, you know, instantly, not even thinking about it, we're comparing ourselves. Oh, that mom has, has brought a meal to every school potluck this year. You know, I only bought, brought it twice, whatever. So we have this, this judging going on in our minds. And so we really equate good mothering with this idea of selflessness and being always of service and like going, going beyond, you know, it's like the best waiter or waitress you've ever had. It's sort of that idea, like that's the good mom. That's the one who's just always going to bat. And so again, it's not something that we're thinking consciously, huh, let me, you know, let me think how I can, can serve, 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 serve. It's that it's a belief that's in there in our mind and because we haven't examined it and we haven't really checked in with, is that belief true? Is it how we want to, you know, do our mothering? 
since we don't do those things most often, then it becomes this automatic uh, mindset that's running for us. And so these are some of the reasons why, again, it can show up in men, certainly. And these are some of the reasons why it is so strong in women. We, we had it modeled for us. It's still the way girls are socialized to be. And they all, girls also get the message that being the opposite, being the opposite of, you know, super caring, compassionate is selfish. And so girls then attempt to pull away from that. They don't want to be, um, uh, you know, shamed for being that way. And so they like, oh, okay, well then I guess we need to be more caring and more of a, of, you know, making sure people are happy and keeping things going. So those are some of the reasons that, that it shows up. The other thing I want to say is there is a noble intention behind people pleasing. So especially if you think about as a mom, one of the things that we are wanting is our children to be you know, really well cared for, very nurtured, very loved, very supported. And we want that with our spouses too and with, with our parents and other people we care about. So there is a nobleness behind the people pleasing. So it's not a judgment to say, hey, you know, we're bad for being people pleasers. Not at all. Um, there is something noble there. However, what you'll see in, in subsequent videos is that the, there's such a downside to this being our default way of moving through life and going through the world that the noble intention, it's almost like it gets lost or it gets negated or it's simply not, it's like you, there's other ways to do that noble intention without getting all the negatives. So that's what I wanted to start off with is what is people pleasing? What am I talking about? Why does it show up? Why does it show up especially for moms? And so I will close this video and let you know that in the next video, I'm going to talk specifically about some of the problems that occur for us as the people pleasers. And then I will also be able to tell you about some of the problems that happen for our children and those we love when we are in that people pleasing mode. So thanks so much for listening. And as usual, you can always comment, post questions. I'm glad to engage in productive conversation. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for this time. And I will talk to you soon.